Tô bom aí, ó. Postreu! Artillery and modern air reconnaissance have become this war's power couple. This tandem causes the most damage to both enemy machinery and personnel. Ukraine relies heavily on modern howitzers like M37s to suppress the enemy and provide cover for its own troops. So today we are working with the 45th Brigade. This is the artillery unit who are working with the M37s. They are covering the infantry units. For advancing in the direction of Klishkivka, the nearest village to the Bakhmut. Since the summer of 2022, Bakhmut has been one of the hottest spots of the front line. The Ukrainian army is fighting for the strategically important heights around the city, such as Klishivka, Berhivka and Hromove. During the last months, this unit has been working tirelessly, pushing themselves and their M37s to the limit. 200 to 250. That's a whole day of work. If you maintain the gun, it does not fail. Each howitzer has fired tens of thousands of rounds. As we are speaking to the commander, new ammo arrives. The 45th Artillery Brigade is relatively new and consists mostly of volunteers and mobilized men. Sold spare parts for cars. No one is born for war. I'm winding up fuses because without them, the shells won't explode. 107s, fragmentation, or you can switch to high explosive. We use them for infantry. After fleeing the occupied city of Kherson, Sergei volunteered to serve in one of the airborne assault brigades. During the offensive on Solidar, he got injured and then redeployed to this artillery unit. Compared to the trenches on the line of contact, this is a resort. But you still know your comrades are dying there every day. We enter the angle to understand how high to raise the barrel. We have a bubble meter that we use to set the level and we have an angle meter. We enter the angle and through the sight we aim at the color meter and rotate the gun accordingly. Despite its precision and great range, the M37 is quite a large towed habitzer, which makes it easy to spot by Russian drones. Russian airborne assault troops are stationed over there, and they are quite well trained. If they open fire on us, it is with large caliber systems, or MLRS. We use them to protect the gun from Russian suicide drones. It's quite effective. Some guns were not damaged at all, some had minimal damage. The first Havitzers to arrive in Ukraine were used to liberate the Kharkiv and Kherson regions. They also played an important role in the Vuhledar direction, where Russia tried to advance with large forces this winter, but suffered significant losses. Here near Vuhledar we meet the 55th Artillery Brigade, who were among the first ones to receive the M37s. In January and February this direction was brutal. At that time the guns were brought from other directions to reinforce us. We had to move constantly. And it was winter, cold and swampy. The first few days were very hard. And then we just got used to the rhythm. Then, as you know, we stopped them, pushed them back, burned a lot of equipment, and the situation stabilized. At the beginning of the full-scale invasion, Nazar was abroad. However, he made his way back to Ukraine to join his brigade, where he served in 2016. The war is a lot different now than it was in 2016. Back then, we could go out, shoot, and then go back to shoot again in a month. Now the war is 24-7. Now this direction is relatively calm, as most Russian units are deployed elsewhere. Still, the artillerymen have to be fully alert, ready to crush any attempts to assault Ukrainian frontiers. As we can see, it's vital for the crew to hide the gun directly after they fire it, because there are too many UAVs from the enemy side that will be searching for this exact gun within the seconds. Oleg joined the 55th in 2019. Back then he was working mostly with the Soviet-made Psabis. In July 2022 he switched to the M37s. Five days. We were trained by American experts. They actually didn't believe we'd do it. But we showed them what we can do on the Mistas. In terms of targeting, everything is the same, except for a couple of nuances. The Mistar was large, fired short range and constantly leaked all over the place. This gun is more modern and reliable. It is more complicated, but we've gotten used to it. 끝까지 시청해 주셔서 감사합니다. 도움이 되셨다면 좋아요를 다른 이야기도 궁금하시면 구독을 눌러 주세요.